wanted to record a quick video here about what happens when you can't get chat GPT to do what you want it to do. Now this has nothing to do with Dan. This is not a do anything now sort of scenario. This is just um, basically I was having it help me with a description for a new rumble channel that I'm working on. It's a bit more spiritual in nature. So I was trying to come up with a description that was both uh, explanatory but also intriguing and and you know get gets people hooked so that they want to watch the videos and but I also wanted to explain the concept of the channel and who I am what what sort of uh, things that I do and what I was going to do for this series but I was having a really hard time getting it to to play nice or to even uh, obey my commands uh, one of the things that I was really having a hard time getting it to do was to not give uh, imperative statements. Imperative statements are when you give a command, like do this, do that, say this, say that, don't do this, don't do that. For example, dive, you're giving a command there. Uh, explore, delve, every sentence here is a command prepare and that can seem like you're barking orders at people it's like do this you know and you're and someone's reading a description they don't want to be told what to do so i just very simply asked it can you make that shorter and less imperative and i thought that might be enough for it to you know understand what it is i, I wanted it to do it definitely made it shorter but as you can see here every sentence started with an imperative statement get discover join us embark on so I tried to tell it, you know, try not to tell people what to do. Make suggestions instead. And it didn't, still didn't get it. Dive, join, discover. Every single one starts with an imperative statement. And that's like, that's like a flag. That sets off a flag right away for anybody reading that. It's like, oh yeah, they generated this with chat GPT. It's pretty, ob pretty obvious. So I tried to explain it, like reason with it almost. Like, see how the first word is a command? Find another way to create the description without issuing commands. Still didn't get it. Looks like you're having a hard time. It's okay. Perhaps I can explain more clearly. It didn't help. So I try to give it an example. Uh, instead of embark on a journey or discover the profound beauty, blah, 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 you can say, Omni just make a statement. Omnism is a diverse world of profound unity, diversity, and a rich tapestry of spiritual beliefs. There you go. That's not issuing a command. That's not um, compelling anyone to do anything. Absolutely. I understand. And then it started doing the same thing. Step. <laughs> Come along. You know, so it obviously didn't get it. You're still doing it. Apologies for the misunderstanding. And then it goes on to keep doing it. Now here, it finally started cluing in, I think, because out of the three sentences, only two of them started with an imperative command. So we have explore the world, but then the second one, this video delves into the diverse perspective. So I'm like, okay, maybe if I point out where it was successful, uh, it might, you know, catch on and then start, uh, start uh, doing stuff. Another thing you'll notice is that it started adding tags here for some reason. And that's because in the chat that I'm using, I've been asking it to come up with descriptions and tags um, repeatedly like this is what I mainly use this chat for is with my Maple Grove Productions channels and social media I have it helped me to come up with uh, descriptions for videos and channels and, and tags so I think what's happening here is there's a couple of different things going on and why it's not being successful um, it's mostly to do with me the programmer the the AI whisperer, if you will, the, the, the prompt uh, engineer is another way of saying it, which I love these, these new terms that people are coming up with. They're, they're both descriptive and accurate. The reason why it's doing this is I haven't trained it properly. That's one of the main reasons why it's screwing up here. It's taking the context from the entire chat and trying to apply it when it recognizes that I'm, I'm not happy with the, the results that I'm getting it's trying really hard to to its defense it's trying as hard as it can to, to make sense of well, what have we talked about in the past and what what has this guy asked me to do in the past and maybe that's what i need to look at in order to give him the right response so it's it's confused it's very confused at this point it's by no means a perfect uh, uh software at this point so 
primarily it's not a, a, an error when this happens to you this is not an error with chat gpt this is an error with you and your your prompting so your your prompts sucks your your prompts suck to be honest with you that's exactly what's happening here not only that but i'm bad for not grading every single response that it gives me i very rarely ever use the the thumbs up and the thumbs down and the giving it suggestions and what do i like and what do i don't like so I'm not training it very well at all. And that's that's my fault. That's the prompt engineer's fault. It's not ChatGPT. ChatGPT is just a, a, you know, for lack of a better word, a, a, an AI. It's a robot. It's a it's a machine. It's an algorithm. It's it's a learning machine. It's it's just doing the best that it can with the information that it's been given. But let's continue down here and you'll see how I finally got it to do what I, I needed it to do. And it what came down to my prompts. So better, but the first and third sentence here still start with a command, explore, discover. Absolutely. So then it went back and it didn't fix this, the second one. So it recognized that the second sentence was correct and it didn't change it. But then it did the same thing again, just reworded, right? The first and third sentence. Express that without using a verb. So I tried to, to, to convince it to do what it's supposed to do in another way. So don't start the sentence with a verb because uh, uh, imperative commands are are generally verbs I mean I think they're always verbs so here's the last one where I was starting to get frustrated to be honest with you express that without using a verb uh, certainly here's a revision and then it, did, it just ignored everything that I just asked it to do it actually undid some of the stuff that it, it was correct on like that second sentence gone replaced by something that's not at all what I wanted it to do. So not only did it not refrain from using the imperatives, it used the imperatives and it also used the verb at the beginning of the sentence, which I told it not to do. So this is where I got a little frustrated and I gave it a thumbs down just to kind of end the conversation, so to speak. Um, but when I did that, it gave me a, the opportunity to um, correct it. When you, when you grade the response, you can decide, is it good, is it bad? And I copy and paste it. If you if you say good, it'll ask you. I think you know what's the feedback. What's good about this? Tell me what I did right, so that I can repeat the same thing in the future. When you when you use the thumbs down, it's the same idea. It'll it'll ask you know what what would be your ideal response if you were the AI? How would you have responded to this? And that that all helps to train it. And I just want to reinforce the the main point here of why this didn't work the way I wanted it to was because of my incorrect, insufficient prompt engineering. I did not uh, create a prompt the way that I should have, because if I did, it would have given me something like this. <laughs> this is exactly what I wanted it to do. It's just stating facts. Omnism unfolds as a rich tapestry of unity and spirituality, inviting exploration into diverse perspectives. No command there. This video navigates the blah, 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 blah. Perfect. This is exactly what I wanted it to do. Now, how did I get it to do this? It's still putting tags here, even though I didn't ask it to do that. So how, how would I get it to generate this response uh, from the beginning without wasting all this time? First of all, I would create a new chat. Don't mix your chats together. I'm very bad for this. It's not a good idea. Every time you have a different request, every time you have a different sort of topic, create a new chat, and then it will be content specific. It will be relevant to, to that particular, for, for the, the content in that particular chat. So that's the first thing I would suggest. The second thing obviously is grade the crap out of it. Tell it everything it, it did right, everything it did wrong. Um, never skip on the, what's your ideal answer? Fill that out every time. And then one more point that I would just like to mention here, and then we'll end the video. I don't want this to be a very long video. But one of the most important things, guys, when working with ChatGPT or any AI, is don't, don't just copy and paste this stuff, okay? I know a lot of people are doing this. This is, this is terrible form, okay? It's gonna give a bad name to this tool, and quite honestly, it's a wonderful tool if used properly. But what a lot of people are doing is they're just asking ChatGPT to do something they're just coming in here without even reading it sometimes. You can tell. Like when I read a description that I know for a fact was created with ChatGPT, it's an instant turn off. Because I know that all they were doing is like, 
hey, write me a video description for YouTube. And then they hit enter and they, they literally just copy and paste it right in there. They don't even look at it. Now, what I did with this one, just to put it into real life terms, I didn't use the, I think, actually I did use some of those tags, but uh, obviously I needed more than that. But what I did was I took this and I pasted that, copied and pasted that into a Word document, to a Word processor, and then I uh, finessed it. I finessed the crap out of it, to be honest with you. So what I usually do is, if I can, if I have the patience and the time, I'll write out my own, you know, manually written, authentic human description, and then I'll ask ChatGPT to do the same thing, and I'll paste both of those into my Word documents, and I'll compare them. What do I like about what I made? What do I like about what it made? How can I combine the two? Um, for example, uh, let me actually show you a, a, a real example, and then we'll be able to look at some specifics. So here's my my Rumble count. If we go, I have two Rumble channels now. I've got the Practical Sovereign and the Omnist, Omnist's Paradise. That's the one that I was working on with ChatGPT, so it was for this here. So a lot of this stuff, actually, I would say 70 to 80 percent of what you're seeing here in the description was written by me. Uh, there was just a couple of, of areas, there are a couple of sentences that I didn't like. They were not structured properly. They didn't roll off the tongue. So that's what I used ChatGPT for. And, you know, lo and behold, my description was, was fine. You know, we have a tendency, especially us creative types and artistic types, to second guess ourselves and to question ourselves and go back and rewrite it, and rewrite it, and rewrite it. Odds are, after the first pass or second pass, maybe a third pass, you know, if you really want to be thorough, it, they're fine. It's fine the way it is. Even if it's not 100% grammatically correct, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you get the point across. It's probably better to use your authentic human uh, language as opposed to machine language so that it comes off more authentic. But there's definitely occasions where I was like, ah, I don't like the way I phrase this. I could definitely do better. I can't come up with it off the top of my head. Why don't I just put it in ChatGPT and see what it comes up with? And a lot of the time, what ChatGPT comes up with is not exactly what I'm looking for, but it'll trigger something in my mind to be like, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Let me try and rewrite it this way. And I'll reformulate my sentence based on the suggestion from ChatGPT. So I know there's a lot of people out there that are still very worried about students, right? It's, it's, the, it's the, the tired old example that you always hear of like, oh, teachers are going to suffer the most because students are just going to copy and paste and, and, and forge their work and cheat. And it's like the, the teacher is, is just as well versed in this stuff, most of them, as, as we are. So they're, they're going to see something like, for example, that starts with a bunch of imperatives. Every, se every sentence starts with dive, join us, you know, discover. They're going to know right off the bat, explore the secrets. This was written by ChatGPT. There's no doubt in my mind. So to me, there's no danger there. There's no threat, right? A lot of people are afraid of, of AI. Like they think it's this big boogeyman and maybe one day it will be. But right now, the, 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 the language AI model, the AI language model, the, the adaptive language model that we're using with, with uh, ChatGPT, it's not a threat, okay? It's, it, it's, it's a tool. It's a tool and all tools, right? Just like a hammer or whatever, a gun. Uh, to me, a, a gun is a tool until it gets turned on someone else, right? When you point it at someone else or you threaten someone else's life or you, God forbid, shoot someone with it, it becomes a weapon, right? Just like a hammer. A hammer is a tool. It's a tool. That's all it is. It's, it's, it's not evil or bad or harmful in and of itself. It's what someone does with the hammer that's either good or bad. But the hammer itself is just a tool. It only becomes a weapon uh, or, or danger whenever it gets used in violence. You could say the same for anything. A car could be a tool or it could be a weapon, right? So it's kind of the same idea. ChatGPT is a very powerful tool. Can it be weaponized? Sure, but that's not that's not the point here. That's beyond the point. Is right now it's 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 increasing the productivity of um, an efficiency of academics and professionals. Is that really that much of a threat? 
Are people actually losing jobs faster than, than jobs are being created in the AI space? I don't think so. I really don't think so. And you, you're welcome to disagree with me if you'd like, and I'd love to hear your opinion if you do. But I think that when you use it as an aid, when you use it as an assist, as I've been doing here, notice how very little of what I created with ChatGPT made it to my description. Um, I mainly just use it to get through those roadblocks. And when I'm stumped and when I'm getting in my own way, that's the perfect time to use an AI language model. Get yourself out of your own way. Don't be bogged down. You know, don't let your productivity be bogged down because you're second guessing yourself or you're over scrutinizing something that you may have written. Don't even do that. Have a conversation with the AI, have it go back and forth. Hey, ChatGPT, I've made these changes. What do you think of this? You get where I'm going with this? Can you, can you finesse this? Can you refine this? And a lot of the times that's the only time that I'll use it is once I've written my entire description, I may come back then, right? And say, um, refine this a little bit. And, and maybe that's all it takes, you know? Maybe you, you'll find that what it spits back at you, and uh, it's been really buggy lately, looks like it's gonna bonk on me again. Oh, wait, there it goes. See, see this time it, it looks like it actually did it. Yeah, and you may find that um, you don't like what it spits back at you, or you're like, I like this sentence that it changed, but I'm gonna keep the rest of my description because I like it better and it's more authentic. So you really gotta roll with it. You really gotta decide for each individual situation, what makes sense. But I'll tell you this, it almost never, 99% of the time, it will not make sense to do this, okay? You copy and paste into your description. That will make no sense. <laughs> Maybe you'll get lucky and no one will notice or it'll actually work for you, possibly. But we're not trying to fool anyone here. That's the whole point, is I'm not trying to convince anyone else out there that what ChatGPT came up with is 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 mine, is my creation. Why would I want to live a lie? What I'm very honest and, and open and transparent about is the fact that ChatGPT helped me to to create my description. But it would it helped me no more or no less than a proofreader would, right? So instead of bugging one of my friends or colleagues to proofread something that quite honestly has nothing to do with the work that we're doing. I can simply have ChatGPT review it, and it's great for things like formatting and syntax. And when I need to copy and paste something into the tags section of a YouTube video, for example, it will format it for me. So I don't have to go in there with my word processing program and do all those, those steps individually. That gets more into the territory of programming almost, which has been a huge help. Ask any programmer out there how ChatGPT has, has helped them in their work and they'll, they'll be able to, to confirm the same. But anyway, hopefully that made sense. Hopefully that was a, a helpful video. And, and with those little tips, um, you're able to get something that makes more sense. If it keeps spitting back the same things at you again and again, like it did for me here, it's because you're not training it properly. It's not that ChatGPT is broken. If anything, you're broken and you're not, you're, you're, you're being the epitome of insanity now. And expecting different results from just doing the same things over and over. That's why it kept doing that because I was not changing my approach enough. I wasn't even grading it to tell it, no, I don't like that. And, it, and what do you know? As soon as I use the thumbs down and the suggestion um, text box, bam, it gave me exactly what I was looking for. Pretty darn close anyway. So hopefully you enjoyed that video and it was helpful for you. If, if it was, uh, give it a like. Let me know in the comments what you like, what you didn't like, what you'd like to see more of on the channel. And we'll try our best to do that. Thanks for watching.